joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, we'll take our first question from Jay Anderson with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Hey, thanks very much. And uh, Jack, welcome back. Good to see you again. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Absolutely. Different circumstances these days. So I'm wondering if we could start uh, just with you giving us your take on this roller coaster ride of opponents. Obviously, Till, then Holland, now uh, Vittori. Yeah, you know, we started off with Till, and I was super happy with the matchup. Uh, Darren Till is a great opponent and a big fan favorite. And I felt like the training was going super well for him. Uh, very, very good specific training. And then he injured himself. And uh, like four weeks away from the fight, uh, I was going to fight Kevin Holland. Started to train for him. And then uh, like one week from the fight, uh, he gets COVID. And uh, now I'm fighting Marvin Vittori. And uh, yeah, what can I say? Uh, you just need to adapt to the situation and do the best out of it. Uh, uh, it's out of my control, but I'm here in Vegas to fight. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the matchup with uh, Marvin. With all the uh, the cards that we've seen recently impacted by COVID-19 positive tests, not to mention just your usual injuries and everything, in the back of your mind, did you sort of wonder, hey, maybe maybe my fight will be one that's hit? Did you ever kind of wonder if it would wind up like this? A hundred percent. You're thinking about it like, uh, yeah, uh, am I going to get it? You know, I, is my opponent going to get it? Because it seems like it's happening uh, all the time. So uh, I definitely was thinking about uh, that it could happen. So uh, even though, uh, you know, I was surprised, I wasn't that surprised. Uh, you, you have it in the back of your, of your mind. Now, obviously, you've gone from Till, who's ranked six, to Vitt Vittori, who is 13th. Uh, and it feels like you have a bit more to lose here because of that, because you've gone from fighting a guy closer to you in the rankings to one who's further behind. Does that add any pressure for you? No, I don't feel like extra pressure, but I, I feel like, you know, since Kevin Holland was unranked, it was one step up again against uh, Vittori. So I feel pretty good with that, actually, uh, Vittori being a ranked guy. So uh, that, that's all good. Uh, but of course, you always want the biggest names. Uh, but this time, uh, it wasn't possible. So, uh, uh, but I still want to fight. So, uh, yeah, I'm comfortable with it. With it. Um, there's always... Uh, a big amount of pressure in every single fight, and it doesn't feel any different in this one. All right, and last one for me, and it's, uh, on the flip side of that, where do you think a, a win over Marvin Vittori leaves you here? Because clearly the title's the goal, and you were you know, getting closer. Yeah, I'm already ranked number four. I'm already in a sweet spot, in a good position, and I feel like uh, a win over Marvin just solidifies that position. Uh, it will just show everybody that uh, I'm right up there, you know, Marvin went to the, the, the three rounds with uh, Adesanya and if I can finish Marvin, uh, I'll show everybody that uh, I'm ready for that title shot. All right, best of luck this Saturday. Thank you very much. Once again, if you wish to ask a question, please click the hand icon. We'll go next to Augusto Nies Gay with Somos MMA. Your line is open. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So, Jack, after this crazy couple of weeks with, with the change of your rivals and, and all that, how do you manage to keep that smile on your face? Because during this whole week on your social media, on your YouTube channel and on interviews, you have never stopped smiling, man. So what's your secret? Yeah, you know, I wasn't born with many talents, but I was <laughs> born with a big smile. Uh, and I think it's very hard to wipe that off from me. Uh, it doesn't matter what, what, what is going to happen. You, you probably will see me smile on the day I'm going to die. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And Jack, from, from the three fighters, Steel, Holland, and now Vettori, who do you think is or was the, the best matchup for you? Um, the best matchup is Darren Till, but he's also the hardest matchup. So mm -hmm. the best matchup is always the one that you feel like you have the most to win uh, from. And I believe that Darren Till is the hardest matchup. And Kevin Holland and Marvin Vittori, they have different styles, but I feel like they are uh, equally good. So, uh, yeah, Darren Till is the toughest matchup. And then, uh, then Kevin Holland and, uh, and Vittori is about the same. Uh, did you have to make too many changes on your game plan for, for this fight against Vittori? Yeah, it is uh, some changes. But on the other hand, I feel like the style that I need to have to beat Vittori comes very natural for me.
So it's not something that I need to prepare for for a long time. Uh, I think my, my, my natural fighting style works very well against uh, Vittorio. Awesome. Best question. What, uh, what type of fight do you imagine on Saturday and what are going to be the keys for your victory? I'm always imagining uh, a quick fight. Uh, I, I see the finish, you know, early in the fight. Uh, but at the same time, I'm also preparing for a long, grueling, tough fight. Marvin Vittoria has never been finished, uh, but I'm looking forward to, to be the first one. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jack, and back on Saturday. Thank you so much. We'll go next to Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Hey, Jack, can you hear me? Jack, no, you're good. Thank you. Jack, uh, every time I think about the circumstances for this fight, I just have to wonder, how the heck did this guy stay focused? I mean, this is just a lot of changes. This is already not ideal with 2020. Just what's the secret? Because not a lot of guys would have said, you know what, let's do it. Three different opponents, I'm good. Yeah, you know, I feel like in every single fight, you can prepare as well as you want, but you never know what's going to happen in the fight. And I think uh, knowing that, I just bring the same mindset into the, a new opponent. You know, I, I never know what was going to come. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't feel too worried about it. Uh, I know who these guys are. Uh, I've been seeing their fights. Uh, and uh, I'm in good shape. I'm well prepared. So, uh, yeah, I just feel so eager to fight right now that uh, uh, it doesn't matter. Now, I know you obviously uh, from Europe. The last fight was on Fight Island, this one in Las Vegas. Was it easier or harder with the travel for you to get to the United States? Definitely uh, longer travel here. Uh, but on the other hand, the fight is going to be at a more pleasant time. And instead of be fighting in the morning, I'm going to be fighting just in the evening, uh, which feels good. So uh, a longer flight, but uh, better uh, uh, the time uh, of my fight is better, better scheduled. This may sound like an odd question, but do you represent more Norway or Sweden personally? Uh, I've got that question many times, and uh, I feel like I represent uh, both Norway and Sweden equally much. You know, I, I always say that uh, um, you know, I grew up in Sweden and uh, Sweden shaped me to who I am and I have my family there, you know, and uh, it made me to the person that I am today. But at the same time, my whole MMA career has been out of Norway. So I feel like I, I, I really need to, to represent those guys that uh, gave me the, the life that I have today. I asked that question because there's a newcomer to the UFC who also represents Sweden this year, who's done work at middleweight, and that's Hamza Chemaev. I mean, is there a little bit of, you know, like local rivalry perhaps down the road, do you think, with him to both represent Sweden? What do you think about that down the line? Uh, no, I, I don't feel any rivalry with Kamsa yet. You know, uh, I feel like he's still climbing and uh, he's fighting him two divisions. And I feel like he's more of a natural welterweight. And I believe that he will... Uh, like most of his career is going to be in, in, in welterweight. Uh, that's really my, my belief, even though he does a couple of fights in, in middleweight. So um, I don't see myself going up against him in the nearest future, you know, but should we, should we, you know, uh, meet along the line uh, when it comes down to, to the title or something like that? Um, I'm up for it, man. But uh, yeah, I, I don't feel any big rivalry with uh, Kamsat. Uh, you know, we have been training together and we have common friends, so uh, we, we get along well. My final question, has anyone been able to get you some noise-canceling headphones at the hotel? <laughs> the thing was that uh, when we traveled and, uh, and my, uh, my headphones uh, were left at home, my, my coach actually was nice to me. He came to me uh, during the flight and Jack, here is my headphones. You, you, you can borrow them. But I actually turned it down because uh, I want to learn from that. You know, I want it to hurt, so I never will forget them one more time. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Good luck. Thank you. We'll go next to Damon Martin with MMAfighting.com. Your line is open. Hey, Jack. Uh, you talked earlier about your willingness, you know, to kind of take on any opponent the UFC threw at you. And, and you kind of were in a, a little bit of a similar situation when you took the fight with Jacare when he accepted a fight with you. 
you know, kind of on short notice when he had a different opponent. Do you feel like more fighters should have that kind of willingness? I mean, obviously, you're not going to speak for other people, but do you feel like there should be more of a willingness? Because you hear so much these days about, I don't want to fight this guy if he's not ranked ahead of me. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it really depends on the situation of the fighter. There are so many different situations and... Uh, uh you know some so, some uh, fighters they, they they need to get what they deserve as well you know and uh so so i i can't uh, i can't talk for them and i know that that me myself after this fight i'm not going to be interested in, in any fight at all I, I want a big fight after this one so um you, you need to be willing to, to 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 fight but i can understand that that, that people are uh, uh picky sometimes but you know let's let's be honest when i uh lost my first opponent here even people below me in the rankings were turning down fight uh, the fight with me and uh, that's another uh, that's a different story well let me let you you, you almost uh, picked out my next question when you originally released your statement about kevin holland was the only guy willing to face you uh i i could kind of sense a little bit of frustration that some of the other guys in the rankings wouldn't fight you uh now obviously injuries and time was there was there a little bit of disappointment or frustration that some of those guys, you know, didn't didn't want to take this fight with you, especially with it being a main event, you know, all those kind of things? Yeah, it, it, it was uh, a little bit frustrating uh, at first. But then when I accepted Kevin Holland, you know, you leave that uh, behind uh, and you don't think about it anymore. But then I got a new opponent and he has a number uh, beside his name. So so that's all good. So definitely some frustration in, in, in the process there uh, when I was, uh, yeah, when I had to accept, uh, accept uh, Kevin Holden to get the fight. I know MMA math never really works. You know, you beat one guy, another guy beats another guy, and suddenly you're better than them. But considering the way you were able to go out there and do what you did to Kelvin Gastelum, and now you're facing a guy who went to split decision with the champion Israel Adesanya, is there... A little bit of motivation to not necessarily say you have to tap him out in the first round, but if you could finish or put on a really strong showing against Marvin Vittori, do you feel like you are, you know, starting to build towards that eventual showdown with Israel, considering you would kind of have taken out a couple of opponents who were really tough for him? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I feel like if I finish Marvin Vittori, I'm going to do something that nobody else has been uh, doing. And uh, uh, I've done it before with, with people that never was uh, was finished, and I, I feel like I'm going to pull it off this time. And if I do, uh, yeah, I definitely feel like I, I will show everybody that uh, I'm on that next level, and I, I do deserve to fight uh, for the title. And, and last one for me, of course, if everything goes well and you win on Saturday, you mentioned you, know, you want the big fights. I imagine you know, the Darren Tills, the guys who are you know right around you in the rankings that would officially earn you a title shot. But... What are your thoughts on the middleweight division right now? Because Israel has been a you know phenomenal champion, but we know everything looks like his next fight is going to be at light heavyweight, which you know unfortunately kind of puts the middleweight division on hold for you know six months could be a year depending on when he actually would fight Jan Blahovich. Is there is there any disappointment in that, or are you kind of like you wish that the champion would just stay in the division? Like, how do you feel about that? Because ultimately, that can affect your future. Yeah, uh, I, I. I can like it if it would turns out to go well, you know, if he um, will fight Jan uh, in, in the first half of next year and then he will uh, defend his middleweight belt in, in the end of next year, that, that that would be all right, you know, especially if he wins and he becomes the undefeated double champ, you know, I would like to fight uh, a guy like that. So uh, I, I'm hoping he, he can pull it off and uh, that uh, he, he will be able to to fight in middleweight uh, next year already. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. We'll go next to Rodrigo Tenori with AG Fight. Your line is open. Hi, Jake. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm great. Thank you. The UFC, UFC changed your opponent three times. How did you prepare for this fight against Vittori, especially the mental part of the game? Yeah. Um... I have known about Vittori for some time, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, you are always imagining fighting different guys in the division. So I, I have imagined myself to fight. Uh, and I just feel like my style of fighting match up really, really good against, against Marvin. So uh, it doesn't work yet. Uh, I 
just feel super mentally right now, and I feel like I could beat uh, any fighter in the world by the day. Like you, Vettori is a solid fighter. And uh, do you prefer keep this with him on the feet or on the ground? What do you prefer? Um, well, I would prefer to uh, to have a mixed fight. You know, I I, I believe that <laughs> I, I I can uh, I can I can hurt him both on the feet and on the ground, and uh, I'm sure you will see both of it. What 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 did you think about the super fight between Adesanya and Blahovitz? Was it the right time for this fight to happen? Yeah, you know, it, it, it all depends on how it's going to turn out. If he's going to lose, you know, and be gone from the division, lose his hype and everything like that, uh, uh, it, it might have been uh, a bad choice. But if he can pull it off, you know, it's going to do great things for him. And uh, I would definitely like to, to, to fight uh, the double champ. Yes. Thank you, Jake. Good luck on Saturday, man. Thank you so much. We'll go next to Cote Cruz with Fordwin Podcast, who our line is open. Thank you, sir. Jack, how you doing, brother? Do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. Well, uh, you previously took a fight on short notice, saving the main event where you beat Jacare in impressive fashion, allowing you to enter the top 10 of the division. Now things are a bit different. Are you still interested in taking fights on short notice? And... How does it feel to be in the fourth place in the rankings a few wins from a title shot? Uh, I can take a short notice fight if it is the right fight, you know, and uh, with that, I mean, like, uh, right now, uh, a title fight, uh, should anything, you know, ha happen, I, I could step, step in. But uh, on the other hand, I feel like I'm just around the title fight myself. So um, the thing is, it's different when you're working your way up and we are getting there. Right now, I'm enjoying my, my spot at the, uh, uh, as ranked number four and, uh, uh, you know, go through the top five uh, has been a goal. And now, now I'm inside of there and now it's just one more goal and that's to uh, become the best. Three of your four last victories were wins by submission in the first round. However, your striking is not far behind and you have the record for most significant strikes in a five round middleweight fight against Jack Hurt too. Um, to what aspects of training or experiences do you attribute your complete, how complete have you become as a fighter? Uh, I feel like I'm uh, very complete, but you know, there's always gonna be things that you need to work on. Uh, but um, you know, my coach told me, told me yesterday that uh, uh, he really believes that I am on the next level now, and it feels like I'm sharper than I've ever been before, and uh, more precise, and everything is just in, in, in tune and in line with, 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 uh, uh, with the game. Uh, so, uh, and I feel that as well. So uh, I, I do believe that I am on the next level right now. And, uh, you know, to become a great fighter is, is a process that's not uh, done over a night. Uh, you need to, uh, always consist consistently look for for progress and and, uh, and work hard for it and uh, I, I, um, there's nobody that's working uh, as hard as me thank you for your time jack best of luck on saturday thank you very much uh thank you very much jack you're all set perfect thank you guys <laughs>